Hello folks and welcome to another gear review from Wild Astro. I'm Richie and if you haven't seen Wild Astro before, what we do on this channel is wild camping, astrophotography and related gear reviews. Okay, today what I want to talk to you about is my new tent. This is the Lanshan 2. This is Wild Astro. So here you have it folks, this is the Lanshan 2. Both doors can be uh, pinned back open like this on both sides so that you can have a view out of the tent. That can be done without losing structure in the tent because you have this one guy rope that runs all the way up to the apex. Um, poles, at the moment are just my black diamond walking poles set to 120 centimeters. And I found that 120 seems to be the butter zone for the height of this tent. If you go any more than that, the top ridge here tends to dip in the middle, um, which means that the inner touches the outer up here. Now that's not a problem in terms of the tent leaking, but it is a problem in terms of condensation coming through the inner and dripping onto you during the night. Um, I did have the poles set a little bit too long when I put the tent up uh, on my trip up the Long Mind with Dave outdoors and in the morning I had a slightly wet head on my uh, sleeping bag and I put it down to that. Lots of nice ventilation underneath. You can shorten the poles and reduce that height above the ground there but again you are bringing the inner tent closer to the outer tent if you do that. Okay, at the moment I'm looking into having some carbon fibre poles made. Um, I found a fella on eBay that custom makes them to length with whatever ends you want on them to replace my walking poles in case I am doing a very short hike and don't really need them. Um, so I'll let you know how that goes at some point in the future. I'm also going to get the four season inner tent for this, um, which is the nylon, this white material that you see down in the corner here all over the entire inner rather than this mesh okay so that should just increase the insulation of the tent a little bit and uh, and allow me to have it out uh, in much colder temperatures but again that's something that'll be uh, in the future and i'll let you know about it as it happens um so yeah let's take a look inside And this is inside. There is tons of space in here. Um, I've got, well, you can't see from there, but I've got f like feet above my head. It's, it's very, very impressive amount of space. Um, if I lie myself down, get my feet in here. There we go. 
Um, my head's nowhere near this top end, but look, I've got quite a lot of space. And then the, the key thing is that here, just here where you can see my toe, the inner is attached to the outer by a little hook and loop there, just like I suggested Van Gogh should have done in the Banshee. Um, but I've got loads of space. It's not an odd shape, it's a nice rectangle. Um, I've got a big vestibule both sides, big enough for um, a pack on one side, probably two packs on one side if you had two people here. Um, I have, as you saw uh, from my last video, I've cooked uh, in there with the door open. Um, there is absolutely acres and acres of room in here. It is like a palace compared to the Banshee. Um, I really have too many good things to say um, to get them all out into one video. It, it is great. Um, so I think we'd better uh, pack it up again and uh, do a direct comparison to the Van Gogh. Okay folks, so new tent day. This is the Lanshan 2. This is the Banshee Pro 300. This is my old tent. I've used this um, a dozen or so times on various trips to various locations. I've spoken a bit about it on my video from the Longmind, my first full night of wild camping. Um, you've got a fair idea of what I think of this tent and what I think its faults are. This is the Lanshan 2. This is my new tent and for the foreseeable future this is the one I'm going to be using. Okay, so let's talk specifics. Uh, why have I changed to this tent from the Banshee Pro 300? Uh, what do I like about it? Are there any things that I'd improve on it? Let's just talk through that now. Let's start with the pegs, okay? So here's the peg for the Banshee, okay? As you can see, there you go, standard aluminium Shepherd's Crook style peg, okay? Quite easy to bend, um, but they do come out of the ground nice and cleanly and they're very easy to clean up once you have got them out of the ground, if you need to. They're also quite easy to bend, you know, to put straight again if you do manage to put a bend in them. Okay, to pitch the Banshee, you need quite a few of these. I think there's about 12 in the bag. The whole lot of the pegs all together that I have to take out with me. If I just grab a set of scales that I've brought out with me here. Okay, so the pegs alone for the Banshee 300, they weigh, once this zeroes, it has now, the pegs alone weigh 295 grams. Okay, so, you know, nearly 300 grams of pegs. Let's have a look at the pegs for the Lanshan. Now, they are these lovely little alloy kind of cross, um, four-way cross section, quite short little things, um, with a little uh, shock cord pull. Uh, and they are, they're pretty lightweight. My only problem with these pegs is that when they come out of the ground, they're quite dirty. They bring a lot of mud out of the ground in the grooves along the side, and you have to get another one of them, another peg, and scrape it clean. But, you know, it's, it's not too much of a hardship. You need eight pegs to pitch the Lanshan to. So all together, there they are. And the full pack of pegs weighs 125 grams, okay? So way, way under half what the pegs for the Banshee weigh. Okay, so let's talk about the tents themselves. Uh, the Banshee, I'm gonna, I've got my scales here again. I'm just gonna pop this on these scales, okay? Now, I can't put, I can't put all three parts, the poles and the pegs and the tent on these scales at the same time because they've got a maximum load of three kilograms and it's more than that, okay? So here we go. So this is the Banshee Pro 300 on the scales. It is, let's get that out of the way. 2,572 grams, so just over two and a half kilograms just for the material part of the tent itself and the bag, okay? Poles, there they are. You obviously have to find space for these in your bag or strap them to the side or the top or, or whatever. So here they are, the poles on there are 326 grams, okay? So, uh, if I'm right, that is just under 3.2 kilograms okay so 3.2 kilograms is your entire package weight for the Banshee Pro 300 what I am able to do with the Lanshan is put all three parts of it on the scales at the same time and the entire setup including a spare peg a repair patch and everything I need to pitch this tent is 1764 grams okay 1764 compared to 3,200 very nearly grams over here, okay? So it doesn't take a genius to figure out that I have almost halved the weight. 
And in terms of the reasons I made that change, there really isn't a lot more to say other than that. This is almost half the weight. It packs down absolutely tiny compared to this. If you really try hard, you can pack the Banshee down into the medium size one of these bags, okay? But that's two sizes larger than this. Um, this is the extra small. You guys have got a very good idea of what I think about the Banshee. It's got its faults. Um, I don't think a huge amount of thought and care went into the design of it. Having said that, it is well built for what it is. Um, you know, the designers did their thing poorly, I think. Um, but the people that actually put the uh, materials together and built the thing have done a very good job on it. There's nothing wrong with the quality of the materials. Um, I do think the poles are a little bit too flimsy. Um, but, you know... That's, that's the Banshee, and they've built it to a budget. Um, having said that, for pretty much the same budget, um, although I did get a, quite a discount on that, um, for almost the same budget, the Lanshan 2 is a fantastic tent. There is an issue with condensation, but I knew there was going to be an issue with condensation, so I expected that. If you pitch it correctly, so that the gap between the inner and outer tent remains constant throughout the night, then you're not going to have any problems with it. You just need to be prepared that you're going to have to dry it off inside the next time you pitch it or when you get home after your trip. Okay, So as long as you're aware of that and you know what's coming, no problem. Other than that, there's not a lot more to say about these two tents, folks. This one is going in the cupboard. It may come out again in the future. This one is going to be my go-to tent for the foreseeable future. It's just about half the weight of the Banshee. It's much, much smaller. It fits brilliantly down in the backpack, and I am absolutely over the moon with it. Um, that's it for this gear review from Wild Astro. If you like what you've seen in this video, please hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up, and consider leaving me a comment. Let me know what you think. Ask me any questions you want about either of these two tents. I'd be more than happy to answer. Please share this video with your friends. Let them know what we do here, and I'll see you next time. I've got a fantastic review coming up of my new backpack. This is Richie from Wild Astro, signing off. Thanks for watching.